happy Tuesday. Today we are continuing our message titled Building Your Spirit out of Proverbs 14. And we're going to pick up in Galatians 5 when we left off talking about the works of the flesh and how the works of the flesh are manifested in society. And we're going to talk about each work and how it's manifested because we're talking about building our spirit. Therefore, we have to understand there are things that we have to be aware of to guard against the um, damage of our spirit, right? As we experience life. Before I start, I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, let this word go out and be edifying to your children as well as edifying to myself. Speak through me. Let it be all of you and none of me. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Okay, so we left off in Galatians 5 and we were on um like verse 21 right but we went through the works of the flesh so i'm gonna pick back up in 16. this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh right so this gives us a clear distinction of how spirit and flesh operates so that we can dis discern when there is conflict within ourselves that we have to settle from a place of gaining understanding or a perspective shift right so the um but if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. So the, the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. Right? So there's a contradiction there. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Right? So if you, if the fruits of the spirit is like love, joy, peace, long suffering and all of these things. Right? And you identify and build relationship with yourself and with the world around you and with God in that spirit. Then when there are um, things being manifested through a perspective that you might have or a, um, you know, feeling or you want to react a certain way, right? Then you can um, realize that that is a time to go within and to heal through the revelation of your your um conscious the level of your consciousness right what your what's what's resting in your conscious what's going on in your conscious what what are you thinking and feeling that you need to elevate from or evolve from right because the way you are to evolve speaks directly to what you need to evolve from and where you need to evolve to so that's the directive that can only be given to you by the holy spirit in your seeking right so verse 17 for the lust okay 18 but if ye be led of the spirit ye are not under the law now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanliness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife sedition heresies envyings murders drunkenness revelings and such like of the which i tell you before as i have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god right so and they which do such things so we have to think about these so a lot of us don't do these things right like it's not a, it's not common for us to do these things but these things understand that they're being manifested in society so they become a part of how society operates right they come they become a part of how society is reactive and um aware and manipulated like intrigued controlled like these are the things that are manifested so we're looking at how they manifest through the works of the flesh right how the works of the flesh are manifested in society by society so how are the works of the flesh manifested in society okay so we talked about how the lack of attention to our spirituality and the level of significance we hold for our convictions in a christ consciousness allows for our physical lifestyle 
to be manipulated and take us further away from God. We said that it's not all the way intentional, but as a result of mankind need to have control because for some reason we don't feel that things are in order unless we have somebody in a place of leadership. It's so bad that even when things aren't going the way they should, we look for someone to blame versus looking for the actual solution to the problem, irrespective of the system or people in place. Because in reality, the systems of this world is made up by human beings who might need the same help. We have access to enlisting when we are spiritually attentive, right? So... No matter what's going on, I mean, no matter who's in place of power, right, they're still human beings, right? They still need help, right? And that help can probably come if we are more attentive to our spiritual lives as individuals, as the um, children of God or the as humanity or as a people. We can um, influence the world in a positive way. Right, so now we're going to be looking at the each each individual um, lust of the flesh. Right, so adultery was the first one. Adultery. So first of all, we have so many problems in society regarding um, the institution of marriage. Right, in our relationship with the institution of marriage and how it is being. Um, manipulated for something that we should desire and that we would aspire to versus something that we should be prepared for and aware of right of what it actually is what it entails before we enter into it because it is such a sacred union and so important to our individual's lives right in in the physical sense but then in regards to our marriage in christ you know to god our marriage to christ as a church and there is a relationship there that reflects the same covenant that um, God has with the children of Israel, right? So that is um, a responsibility to love. In that responsibility to love, there is a responsibility to heal and become and realize what love is, right? And that's that same, those, those same principles apply to a physical marriage. So adultery the uh, is, so what what happens in society that manifests the that makes adultery manifest right so the illusion of marriage itself what it is what it's for what it means if you have a successful one or an unsuccessful one that even that even if you should be married right so with all these things out of perspective or rooted in flesh people make bad decisions seek their fulfillment or temporary comfort or fall victim to the illusion um, manifest in society of how relations should be versus how they want their relationship to be and being conscious enough to hold themselves accountable to the demand, the type... Oh, that's a lot, right? So basically... <laughs> so basically, there's an illusion manifested in society of how relationships should be and how they want their relationship to be. So there's a difference between those, right? And because we don't take the time to explore ourselves spiritually early in life, sometimes we and, and apply that same significance to our spiritual life, then, then we will model our ideal relationship after the norm that is presented to us in society versus what would be natural and agreeable with who we are internally, right? So, um, and then not having enough conscience to hold themselves accountable, right? And then, um, it's so survival mode, right? It's in survival mode that we make decisions that guard our brokenness. And only in our spiritual healing, we uncover our brokenness for the purpose of healing. If we did that before trying to find ourselves in relationships, we would be confident, assured enough to continue to grow to meet the demands of a commitment that we make right so marriage itself is a commitment so there is a responsibility to grow right so this is all the things that are um 
included in the sustainability of a union in the physical this same sustainability has to be you know you become a union in the spiritual in this one individual before that individual unites with another individual if that makes sense right so of course it makes sense we all know <laughs> so also the entire idea of and the also the entire idea and understanding of marriage itself has been manipulated to be more of a financial institution versus a relationship to spot to prosper in life in many ways right so there is this um outside influence of finances and money that infiltrates a union that should be built on something far beyond the physical um you know what you have in the physical right it should be more about what you're growing but in society has been manipulated to to think that way and to cultivate the significance of relationships that way so and then also there's a historical um if we're looking at culture there's um historical trauma in regards to men and women but and then that adds to the misconception of masculine and femininity in its divine nature in today's society to fit the mold necessary to be fruitful and multiply now and that goes for a marriages and you know platonic relationships as well so um the next one is fornication fornication is a result of over sexualization attaching self-worth to being desired by another individual um, molestation in early years unhealthy relationships based in all the previous things mentioned as well as adultery right so that's fornication and just to like to talk on adultery is really just the illusion of marriage itself right after all of that that we talked about that's just basically it right the disillusion um uncleanliness lack of moral code either taught observed or adapted to in relation to all levels of uncleanliness the longer you are in your flesh and unhealed there will be um not there will not be attentiveness to admitting this and changing it or finding it important to change, right? Because, you know, cleanliness is next to godliness, right? And it takes accountability. So despite the things that you have experienced over life or things that keep you from that, the focus on that, there should be a focus on that as you grow spiritually, right? So there's no real truth or attentive to spirituality if that is not a part of your growth. And that's internal and external. So idolatry. Idolatry um, a com it's related to a complete misunderstanding deeply established in the management of society to control, set boundaries, or establish order, right? So it's it was easy to get caught up in um, idolatry. Like if we look at the example of the children of Israel in the wilderness and building the calf, there was a place of... Um, you know misunderstanding of what was going on what they were supposed to be doing how they were supposed to be so they needed something to worship to feel like that they were attributing um what something to 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 um keep their spiritual essence alive right and that's what has been done over um time throughout history and that's just to establish order, set boundaries, control. That's coming from a need to do that from within and without. When when we look at mass idolatry, right? But the idolatry that comes from in the internal place is um, is is a an attempt to have control or maintain control over oneself, one environment, one's experiences, and all those things, right? So verse. 21 reads he that despiseth despiseth his neighbor sinneth but he that hath mercy on the poor happy is he so um compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm so that's mercy right so mercy but he that have mercy on the poor happy is he right so um just to see we talked about this in the last message 
in regards to poverty and how it is uh, misinterpreted in society, how it comes about and how it should be perceived and, you know, just the whole ideology of poverty itself. Mercy is something that's shown even when someone doesn't deserve it, right? And But in opposition to that ideology, we have, you know, work hard and you deserve it. And if you're poor, then you deserve it because you didn't work hard enough, right? And we talked about in that in the last message how that is um, a misunderstanding that we hold deeply rooted in society. And so having this in your heart, so despise. He that despises, so we talk about mercy, now we look at the word despise, is to feel contempt or deep repugnance for. Um, so having this in your heart is already turning away from God. So in this feeling, we have to examine our hearts. In that examination, we find areas we need to heal, perspectives we need to shift, and our own personal call to growth and maturity. Right? So we talked about the misconceptions of the poor. In our last message, mercy is of the heart posture and an understanding that we don't want people to go through what is inhumane. And instead of us judging to see if their situation is fair to them, mercy says that any treatment that is inhumane is unfair, irrespective of the person who is experiencing the suffering. Now, God does judge and we can't get in the way of that not by stopping it and not by insisting on our own judgment right um so there are instances where like listen you deserve some time but um <laughs> no like really for real like there are some crimes and things that people commit that there are like they're menace to society so they have to like you know leave but and that's just you know that but Witchcraft. Uh, let's talk about witchcraft because that is the next um, works of the flesh that is manifested in society listed in Galatians 5, right? So the works of the flesh is made manifest, right? So witchcraft is made manifest. Um, covetousness is a big part of the adherence to witchcraft practices with an obvious lack of conscious development, the understanding of the power of God and how he truly works. This is the significance of the memorial of scripture and God bringing the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, not the land of Egypt specifically or in the reflection to discount Egypt's attributions to the development of civilization. But we also have to understand that things that understand things multiplied in the physical can be duplicated and manipulated in the physical right so the things that is spiritual is eternal right so the things that are multiplied within our knowledge and consciousness spiritually are eternal but when we try to multiply things of the physical in our to make it a part of our knowledge and our consciousness then anything in the physical can be manipulated right so this is the significance of jesus leaving us the holy spirit to teach us everything so fear and low self-esteem also contributes to the practice of witchcraft. So the next one is hatred. Hatred is a byproduct of covetousness. Covetousness is rooted in a lack of identity that can only be sought through a relationship with God that grooms you past a physical conscious state in which you see yourself and the world around you differently. And when you say those things, and when you say those things or speak the things that reflect hate, you go within and explore those things as you are instructed in scripture in the New Testament specifically, as this requires you to circumcise your heart, right? The New Testament requires you to circumcise your heart. The Old Testament was about circumcising your flesh, but the gospel of Jesus Christ teaches us to circumcise our heart because even if we are reading the gospel and we don't agree or understand what um, Christ is teaching us this is the significance of it being a parable right because you can ponder it and meditate on it and ask for an understanding to be given to you supernaturally so that you can so that it can become a part of you and actually change you right 
um, versus this is the rule that I'm going to live by. Like, sometimes we just don't understand. We don't have the capacity or the substance to be able to live by those rules. And so when we are given um, the gift of the Holy Spirit to understand why and how we can live according to those rules, then we seek and, and then we find. And so, and then when we seek and we find, we elevate in consciousness naturally because that is the natural order of evolution. So, um, so hatred, right? You have to circumcise. In circumcising your heart, you honor God by honoring yourself to protect the thing in which you must circumcise for the glory of God. So it's not like you just, you know circumcise your heart fix all these parts of your heart and then all of a sudden you are this completely you know childlike per person right you circumcise your heart and as you circumcise your heart you are doing that to protect something that is given to you for the glory of god right um well you actually do that to present to God what has been given to you for his glory right but you can't present your heart that way if it's not um protected right if it's not taken care of if it's not um nourished right so then you have a responsibility to protect and to nourish your heart as well so I just wanted to clear that up because you know <laughs> okay so um because it is all for his glory. And this is why God is gracious, protective, loving, jealous, and a terrible God. He's all of those things because he, he wants, he needs your heart for his glory, right? So he's going to protect your heart. Variance. Um, so variance. Variance is the next one, right? So we have hatred and then we have variance. Variance, the true, the fact or quality of being in dif being different, divergent, or inconsistent. The state or fact of disagreeing or quarreling, right? So um, God is not the author of confusion. Uh, so this is something that is important to explore within as a moral code of conduct to come into a character trait that supports bringing glory to God in the alternative aspect of this. I just didn't put any periods. <laughs> so um, in... So, glory to God in the alternative aspect of this in which variance exists in the execution of your person, right? So, you it's to exe execute your person in society. Like, you have been sent here to execute your soul purpose, who you are, your soul identity, right? And in executing, you have to build up your character so that you do not display variances. And in building your character, you have to get to know yourself and understand yourself better right so this is a part of your spiritual journey in growing um some people don't have to go through this but some people do right so that's just something that you have to um guard against because it is the works of the flesh right but you won't know that it's the works of the flesh without it you explore in scripture because it's listed there as the work of the flesh and then you go into the definition and the meaning and and how the scripture is speaking against us having those things or being that way and then you like okay so am i that way and then you like start to explore yourself better and then you start to figure out what you need to change and what perspective how did you get here and where do you need to go from here to become better right so it's this process emulations effort to match or surpass a person or or achievement typically by imitation reproduction of the function or action of a different computer software system <laughs> that's the definition of emulation right so this is so deeply embedded in society in so many ways but it would be more beneficial to our perception deliverance and overall salvation of our consciousness that we explore the source of emulation right so it's not only beneficial that we see it as something that affects society because it's so prevalent right it's almost natural because not, there's nothing new under the sun so the problem is um the problem is the source right um 
because the source of it is that's where we realize the what mindset to avoid so that we are not distracted or led astray by work of the flesh that is being actively used to control control so look to control society right so i mean we might like what's the source of these emulations like what are what is being replicated why is it being replicated what is it contributing to the replication of it what is it contributing to is it good like is it good for humanity right so it's not that it's something that exists it's it's how is it a work of the flesh how does it become manifested by society to work the flesh of society right so It really, I really don't have to say all this. <laughs> okay, so emulations. Like, we shouldn't be, like, trying to copy uh, each other or one-up one another. There should be no competition because as we elevate in consciousness, we will see that we all work um, individually to um, for a collective purpose, right? And if we focus more on our own gifts and what God is calling us to do in whichever way he has created us, then we would see um, that there's no need to do those things, right? So there's wrath after that. Wrath is, once again, the expression of emotion is the reflection of an internal experience. So whatever you experience inside is going to be expressed outside. Wrath can be an expression of different internal experiences such as anger, fear, disappointment, sadness, as well as envy, jealousy, covetousness, and evil, right? So all kind of stuff could be going on when you are reacting in wrath, right? But it is um, your responsibility to explore the source of that emotion because it could be coming from a unhealed place where you have to actually do the, the healing or it's still an unhealed place if you don't know how to react to something in a way that is constructive, right? If you don't have control over your emotions, that is from a place of not the spirit of God, but the um, flesh reaction. It could be fear. It could be envy. It could be covetousness. It could be jealousy. Um, it could be disappointment. It could be sadness. Either way, there's not a proper expression of what is going on internally. So that doesn't bring glory to God. And then strife is the last one we're going to go over. But there's also sedition, heresy, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings. All of these are manifested in society, but they affect society in a way where um, there is um, control, yet there's chaos. And um, there is unity, yet there's division, right? So all of these things, and none of it is good. Most of the times, the unity is on something that's bad. And the division is on something that's good. And it's just ridiculous. So, um, for strife, right? For the purpose of this message, we are exploring how these things become manifest in society because the goal is to collectively elevate in consciousness. And we elevate in consciousness when we raise our awareness toward the things that negatively impact our spiritual space and fortitude. So how these things become manifest, strife is so blatantly orchestrated through media and the planting of the ideology of competition in capitalism, professionalism, relationships, religion, geography, culture, lifestyle, ethnicity, and physical appearance. So we really have strife deriving from the false illusions of competition that has been embedded in us from a place of lowered consciousness. However, there is healthy strife in the context of sport, right? in which sport and real life must be separate and this can only happen in consciousness the alternative is that we you live your life as a sport which is beneath the overall purpose of your creation and this is another falsehood that has been presented to us as a perspective to hold about life right that this is a game life is not a game like you are like really purposely supposed to be walking in the spirit of god understanding that your encounters and your um what you do in the earth has a direct impact right and if we are attentive to our spirituality then we would see 
our our deeds and our decision to re that reflects this um spiritual vortex of activity that is both seen and unseen okay loves that's it for tonight be blessed be well be whole and we'll talk soon